Hey y'all, welcome back. This week's What's for Dinner is a very special collab. It's a cookbook collab with Tamara from Southern Wife Everyday Life. And there are a bunch of other ladies that are um, <laughs> in collaboration with this video. So there's a playlist that will be in my description box below. But if you are new to my channel, my name is Sammy and welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back and supporting me. I hope you all enjoy this what's for dinner. And I have two recipes for you this week. And they were both very, very yummy. One was out of a Taste of Home cookbook. And the other one was out of a local church cookbook. So I'll have that recipe typed up in my description box below. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you need more meal inspirations, check in my description box below for the link to the playlist for the cookbook collab. Let's get to cooking. y'all here are the ingredients that you will need to make this um, two tater shepherd's pie um, the only thing I would change about this recipe is the green beans that I used um, I used the frozen whole green beans um, but I would actually stick with the recipe that's in the cookbook and actually use the French style but I didn't have any and I really wanted to make this recipe so that's why I used the frozen whole green beans but anyways it turned out just fine and it tasted really good. So if you're looking for a hearty meal, try this one. Okay, so to start out, you wanna go ahead and get your ground beef in a pan and brown it up. And of course, you want to get your seasonings, whatever seasonings you want, but I used nature seasoning and cavenders in this one, I believe. So once you add your seasonings, you just want to go ahead and brown that meat up. So once your meat's browning, you want to go ahead and get your water ready to make your instant mashed potatoes. And that's what I'm going to do right here. I just follow the directions on the back of the pouch and there you go. All right, y'all, so the ground beef is done, so you wanna go ahead and add in the garlic, and that's what I am doing right here, and just getting that in. And then, of course, add in your cream of mushroom soup. Get that all stirred up and mixed all up together. I do add just a little bit of water to help kind of thin that mixture out so it pours over the tater tots better. All right, so now you wanna get you out a nine by 13 casserole dish and spray that really good so nothing sticks. And then layer the bottom of the casserole with your tater tots. I use the um, crispy crowns, I believe, cause they're flatter. Then pour your beef mixture over top of that and then smooth all of that out and get it nice and even. And then once that's done, that's when you start adding your green beans. And like I said, I would have used the French style if I had them, but I didn't. And it was just as good using the frozen ones. It was just a little bit harder to scoop out of the dish. Then you wanna layer your mashed potatoes on top, smooth that out, and then top that with some cheddar cheese and put it in an oven for 350 degrees for 25 to 35 minutes, I believe. Until it's all golden and bubbly. And here you go, guys. Let me tell you something. If you are looking for a rib sticking meal, this is what you need to make. So try this one out and let me know what you think of it. It was super good and I just served it up with some crescent rolls that I made. So it was an easier dinner and pretty much one pan and you're done besides browning up your ground beef. But anyways, I'll show you all the end results here in a second. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Look at that good old food right there. And it was so delicious and pretty easy to make. Um, so if you try this recipe out, let me know. Send me a message or comment below and let me know what you think. But it was super, super good. All right. 
right, y'all, let's get this easy ravioli lasagna done. This is the recipe that come out of a church cookbook that we have here locally where I live. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You just need some ravioli, some pasta sauce, some hamburger, and whatever toppings you like. I just threw some mushrooms in there. And of course, you need cheese and garlic. So first, you want to start off by browning your burger and get that all nice and browned up. And for the seasonings, I believe I used Tony's, Cavender's, and Nature Seasoning, if I'm thinking right. And yep, I was. See there? See all three of them? <laughs> but anyways, you want to put all your seasonings in there and get that all browned up. And here in a second, it's going to be done. See? I wish it was that easy to cook dinner. Let me tell you something. If I could just snap my fingers and have it all done, buddy, it wouldn't be hard at all. But anyways, there you see me adding in the zesty spaghetti and then I put in some tomato paste and then I just combine all that together to where it's all smooth and even. And then once that's combined, um, I believe I added in my mushrooms and then you'll see me kind of cutting up the mushrooms here in a minute because they were in bigger chunks, of course, and I just wanted them to be more evenly in the sauce once I put it in there. And there's my garlic, y'all. Y'all know I'm a garlic fanatic. So it has to be in pretty much every recipe of mine. So there I am adding the mushrooms, like I said, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut them up. And then of course you wanna stir that all up and then add in your pasta sauce of your choice. But I used the one from Aldi this time. And let me tell you something, that stuff's pretty good. And it's really comparable to Prego in my opinion. And I love me some Prego. So if you're ever at Aldi and you get that, try it. It is super, super good. And y'all, I'm only human. So at this point, I realized my pot was not big enough. So I went and got a bigger pan and I went ahead and just dumped that on in there to where I could have plenty of room to let that stir up and get all yummy and have plenty of room to simmer in that pan. All right, so here in just a second, I'm gonna add a little bit of butter and let that sauce simmer together. And now you'll see a little screen coming up here in a second because y'all, I lost some footage of how I put this together, but I wrote the steps down um, on the next screen so y'all could see how to do it. But it's basically you put sauce in the pan, then you put your raviolis, and then you put more sauce on top of that, cheese, and then you just repeat the layers. And I had three layers all together. Once you have all of it put together with all the layers for the top of it, um, I finish with cheese, of course, but then you want to sprinkle with some Italian seasoning and some extra Parmesan cheese. So that's what I'm going to do right here. And then you'll want to put it in the oven 350 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until it looks all golden brown and bubbly and delicious. <laughs> And right here, I'm just going to make my favorite um, breadsticks. They are the great value garlic breadsticks. And I always sprinkle a little bit of garlic salt on top of mine. If you have not tried that, give it a try. It just gives it a little extra something, something on top. And me personally, I love them that way. But here is the finished um, recipe of the easy ravioli lasagna. And let me tell y'all something. This was so good and so easy to make. So I'm going to go ahead and get all that plated up here in a minute and let y'all see the finished lasagna. And when I serve mine up, I just put a little bit of basil and sometimes I put some Parmesan cheese on there, but this night I think I just put some basil on top so it would have that freshness to it. And 
a little bit more color but anyways i hope you all enjoyed these recipes and that you at least give one of them a try if not both of them because i am quite positive that you all will like both of them so anyways guys until the next one thank you all for watching and don't forget to check out the other ladies videos which will be in the playlist below in my description box and thanks Tamara for hosting this cookbook collab I had a blast doing it and I will see y'all next month for another one until then bye y'all